and the whole country will shut down and there will be no end in sight because you'll be talking to a man you say I'm going to strike because you haven't paid me 18,000 and the guy will say I can't pay you and the guy will say what do you mean by you can't pay me look at your, the kind of cars you're driving look at the kind of lifestyle you're living what do you mean by you can't pay me you know in River State 52,000 people are our, our staff strength in the state okay they are taking about 6 billion naira in our revenue base every month so we have a state of 5 point something million people and 50 something thousand their wage bill is 6 point something billion so what do you do? do you sack them? do you give them the minimum wage? and if you give them the minimum wage then you have probably your bill now goes up to 7 point something billion and then you have just a few billion left for education for health for roads power other infrastructure so we have a problem coming up in Nigeria and thank God for the minimum wage to finally highlight this problem and hopefully resolve it. Hopefully. Hopefully. Thank you. Very thank much. you as well. Guys, we're done. It's not global. <laughs> All right, so, uh, you know, MEND I understood very well. I understood MEND because MEND was an email address and there were several different groups and they all hooked into an email address and it made it look like it was one organization. It never was. Boko Haram, on the other hand, appears to be somewhat unified. Um, rumors have it that members literally trek from Abuja to Kaduna. So you're dealing with a group of people who death, you know, is something they actually like. Um, people who have nothing to lose and um, people who um, are very religious. And when you bring religion and violence, we all know it's an explosive mix. Now, it would seem foolhardy to me that anybody in the security agencies would be talking about crushing them. Because who are they? It's not even like the camps where they couldn't even crush them, but they had camps. The, the, the militants in Nigeria had camps, yet they couldn't crush them. But these guys don't have camps. They could be sitting underneath a tree somewhere on top of a hill having a discussion. So it seems foolhardy to me that you want to confront them with this um, I'll crush you mentality. It just seems to me that the sensible way to approach these things is to slowly isolate the extremists. And the best way to do that is through, you know, religion. You know, get the imams to go out there and preach the gospel of peace. You know, whatever the issues are, start to resolve them. I'm reminded, I mentioned Tony Blair earlier in the interview, but I'm reminded that in the UK, the government and the IRA, Irish Republican Army, were actually in discussions. Many of us did not realize that. I was in the UK at the time, and I was shocked when the reports came out that the government and the IRA had been in dialogue for a while. Even before a bomb explodes, they call the uh, MI5 and tell them they had a special code. So when the IRA calls them, they will call that code. So the MI, the MI5 would know that this is a genuine bomb threat and they'll tell you that a bomb is going to go off in, t in 10 minutes in this location to minimize damage. So it was a negotiation. They had agreed that, yes, we'll be bombing you, but just so that we don't kill too many people, we will tell you, we'll give you 30 minutes notice. Because the bomb is to still say that we're, we don't, we're, we're not agreeing, but at the same time, we're going to minimize casualties. That was a negotiation between them. And eventually, that negotiation produced a ceasefire which they are enjoying today. So it just seems to me this idea of I'm going to bomb you out of the sky and all that. We don't have the intelligence to do it. We don't have the resources. This is a new threat. Uh, so it's like somebody walking into uh, school for the first day and wanting to write the exams. We're not ready. So our best bet is to play it safe. Our best bet is to play it softly, softly. And as they say, softly, softly, then I take catch monkey. That is what we should have been doing. So Boko Haram, I think, is a problem. Um, when kidnapping started, everybody thought it's, it's, there's that problem. It belongs to Niger Delta. Then it moved. It got to everywhere. And then it came to small children. And then people started to say, ah, kidnapping. Same thing with uh, men. Militancy. Until it got to Lagos in the Atlas Cove uh, bombing. Some people in Lagos felt they were immune. Same thing with Boko Haram until he got to Abuja and the Inspector General of Police was a close target. Everybody thought Boko Haram is some distant phenomenon. The problem we have in this country is that we always wait for things until the last minute before we resolve them. 
There's absolutely no reason why 